Couldn't get the mail back to you guys yesterday, but we got it right here for you today with the Cognac Boys. Question of the day is, will Matt Eberflus take a step forward as a head coach this season? Y'all know we're going to do that and dive into the mailbag right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears. You got me, Bobby, your host here. I'm with C-Dub. We the Cognac Boys. If you're tuned in with us, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the <laughs> if you haven't done so already. C-Dub, what's the word? What's the word, big dog? Let's get it. Let's talk these bears. You already know. Look, y'all know we normally come in with a topic to start and kick things off, but this was posed by my man's book. I'm going to let him spill it for you guys. We're going to dive into it, break it down, and then continue on with the mailbag. So first thing first, here's the voicemail from Book. Book. Yo, yo, Bobby C. Dub. What's good, man? This book, man. Blessings to you and yours. Man, I want to give a quick um, a quick thought about something, man, that's been, you know, rolling around in the brain. You know, everybody's talking about the players we getting and uh, uh, the quarterback we're about to get. I want to talk about the coach, man. I want to talk about Flus. You know, because as much as, you know, the team is changing, I got a feeling that Flus is going to take a step forward this year, too, as a head coach. Because it, there was some mistakes made last year, and I think he realized that. And I think with this new crew, I think that he's going to learn a lot about being a head coach. He has a lot of uh, people around him now that, you know, that's been around for a while and can show him a few things and can help him out to be a better head coach. And I think he learned from, he's going to learn from some of the mistakes he made and actually call, uh, make better decisions and judgments in his calls. And um, I think he's going to take that step forward, man. And we finally going to see, Flus be the coach that we, or I should say, think that he can be. Because at first, uh, you know, in the last year, I had my moments where, like, I was like, yo, get rid of him. But, man, when he took over the defense and showed that he, the capability he has to call this D, he can, you know, it can only go up. You know what I'm saying? And then from the offensive uh, standpoint with uh, Shane Waldron, you know, he can, you know, they can bounce stuff off each other because he has an actual OC now that got some sense and knows what he's doing. So I'm looking forward, man, to seeing uh, Flus take a step forward along with the team, man, because I got a good feeling about this year. But that's all I wanted to say, man. Again, blessings to you and yours, to your families, man. Y'all enjoy this hot weather that's coming up, man. Chicago up bear down, and I'll I'll let you later. For sure. So y'all heard it from Book. Hence why we had to pose this as the question. So now C-Dub, with all things considered, players coming on board, new guys in, within the coaching staff, do you think Matt Eberflus as a coach is going to take a step forward this season? I think if you answer it simply, you got to say, yeah, why not? Uh, I think the uh, the pendulum is is pointed in, in that direction. Uh, and if you look, and, and Booker stated this in, in his um, – take there at the end of the season they finished five and two i think it was five and two um Mm -hmm. the defense got increasingly better over the season and you can you can definitely give credit to the players that that we acquired like montez sweat um he came in and changed the defense but you definitely got to give some of that credit to matt eva because he was doing all the play calling since alvin williams went on his hiatus i'm gonna say this with the players that we're adding on to this team and uh, the signing of Jalen Johnson for the foreseeable future, I think he he has no other uh, recourse but to get better as a coach. The player's going to instantly make better as a coach. Now, can he learn this from his bad haps and play calling? Because I think mainly uh, Shane Waldron is going to be in charge of the offense. If any input going to be made by me, Matt Eberflus, it's going to be minimal. But – when you look and when you say getting better as a coach, you want him to get better in calling plays in certain key situations in the game. 
especially at the end of games when we got big leads. Stop being so afraid and calling these drop back zones and start getting more aggressive. Uh, I think he did that at the end part of the season last year, and I think he'll continue to do so. So, yes, he can get better as a coach next year. And I'm uh, I'm right there with you and Book. I think Matt Eberflus absolutely will get better. I mean, I think that when you look at some of the things that he's done already, it hasn't all been perfect. But there were some things that, that were noteworthy to where I feel like you got to take into account that he is willing, you know, he's willing to improve and he has improved. When you talk about playing young guys like Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker and things like that and finding more playing time for uh, – Javon Dexter and finding uh, time and snaps there for Zach Pickens. You got to take that into account. Then you look on the offensive side, the center problem. He's seen that it was an issue. He tried to make changes to it. It just didn't work out in the favor or in what we wanted to see. But now when you talk about what he's added on to the team, see, Doug, we're talking about this coaching staff. You got guys that are on both sides of the ball now that come with a lot of experience that have been a part of winning cultures. So they know what it takes to win, and they will and should be able to provide Matt Eberflus with some of that input and be like, no, we're not doing we're not dropping our biggest lineman <laughs> back in yeah. coverage. Now, yeah. if you draft uh Leatu Latu, you can do that, Matt Eberflus. But that ain't the point. <laughs> the point is, is that look. We already, Matt Eberflus has taken care of one of the most important parts of being a good head coach, and that's having your locker room. Everybody speaks highly of Matt Eberflus. Everybody speaks glowingly of Matt Eberflus. So he has that box checked off. Now it has to translate to what you do on the field. What type of plays are you allowing your coaching staff to call in Key situations. Now, when it's time to, if you were on a third and seven, do you want to bring that pressure? Or do you want to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more laxed or back off a little bit? That's going to be run, one of the determining factors for Matt Eberflus. Then on the offensive side, if Shane Waldron calls something that you don't like when it's a third and one and you need this game and he's trying to, you know, throw the ball, do you hone in to him and say, no, we're going to run this mug down they throw and we're going to get this. We got four, we got another play to run. So we're going to run it. We're going to take our chances that we're going to build our, our identity based on toughness. I think that's the other stuff that got to come out of this. But I absolutely believe and, ag and agree with you and Book. He will take a step forward, bro. Everything's right there for him. Yep. And, and to really be quick, uh, he been through some adversity and he came through at the end unscathed. Uh, he was in the same light as uh, Lukey Dukey, as Luke Getze. Uh, at some point this season we wanted him out of here as well I and mean, what did he do he kept his head down and got better and made the defense one of the top 10 defenses in the NFL ain't no ain't no um I have no doubt that this guy will be a better coach next season no doubt for sure agree with you and thanks book for calling in and uh posing that brilliant question I think that's a very good question that we all got to dive into and really really start to think about because Ryan Post can continue to add as much talent as he want, but if the if the head coach is ass, the team going to be ass. So you got to be able to come out here and learn from his mistakes of the past and be able to put his best foot forward. And, hey, rock the hairdo with the mustache, big dog. Don't get <laughs> rid of the mustache and the beard. I can't grow one. You look decent with one, so do your damn job. You look like a football head coach with a beard and a mustache. Go so let's go. get it rocking and let's keep it going for let's sure. Go. On me, but C Dub, we it's time to keep chugging along with this beautiful mailbag. C Dub, this is a guy we haven't heard from in a minute. Who is that? This next one is from Barry, my guy. Barry, what up, fully? Fellas, Barry here. I know I'm gonna be talking to uh, you know, C Dub and Bobby today. So anyway, fellas, here's the two strategies I really like for the twist, maybe three. Number one, you're sticking pick with, at nine with Roma Dunze. I mean, he's a blue chip wide receiver, fellas. I, I like it. Keenan's only going to be here for a year or two, and you get to reset the clock in a very, uh, you know, expensive position. So that's one. Number two is I am trading down four or five spots and grabbing Jazan Newton out of Illinois, fellas. This kid is a human cannonball. He just punches the line. He penetrates like Ron Jeremy, fellas. So that's number one. Number two. Uh, and then you pick up a second, maybe get a Troy Franklin kind of character in a second. I like that. Um, I want to steer clear of Byron Murphy, fellas. I know he's got a lot of hype. First of all, Johnny Newton is a better player. But second of all, 
pull up a picture of Byron Murphy. Byron Murphy looks like he's going to be stealing food from the, the King cafeteria because he doesn't understand what the word complimentary means. It's free, but he thinks he's stealing it. He's a shady-looking guy that also can't read. Okay, so that's number two. Number three option is I'm going to stick and pick and take either Dallas Turner or I trade back for Jared first. And that way we can take Demarcus Walker into three sets where he belongs so he can rotate with Dexter. Fellas, imagine a NASCAR pass rush package consisting of Montez Sweat, uh, Demarcus Walker at three sets, and then Dexter at nose along with Verse to Turner on the other end. So I really like that. You trade back for Verse. I don't like him as much. He's a little bit older, but also you get that second possibility to grab yourself another wide receiver, which is, again, an important spot to fill, wide receiver three, long term. So, fellas, that's what I like doing in the draft. I, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing some draft profiles, breaking it down. So, um, okay, fellas, I'm going to get back to being a regular here. So, everybody, Chicago up, but they the fuck that. Yo, bro. Yeah, I heard it mans, from bro. Barry. Barry, I heard Barry. Hey, mm-hmm. shout out to you, Barry. And out of all those options, I like option number two. You trade back, get you one of those big husky defensive linemen, and then you get you a wide receiver with that additional pick that you'll pick up, possibly Troy Franklin. I like Troy Franklin. I think he has a lot of tools that you can utilize on the Chicago Bears, and I'm with you. I think Ryan Pose is a guy that looks at the now but also thinks ahead in the future. So – what better way to go ahead and get you a wide receiver now? Let them learn under Keenan Allen and DJ Moore at the same time. Let them mold themselves. Let them go through a little bit of struggles in year one when Keenan Allen is phased out. Or if he returns, this young fella, whoever you select, can still come out and be the de facto number two. And then you can continue to build this thing out for the foreseeable future. And Barry, we missed you, my guy. Oh, Thanks bro. for calling in, bro. C-Dub, what you got? Hey, man, I like... A couple of things. I like the uh, number three option you brought out here because because I would agree that the defensive line need a little bit more patchwork and we'll be set. And Jared Verse will be decent on the Chicago Bears on the line. And you said Demarcus Walker get back to his original position um, right there in the middle there. Um, but I gotta say I love the number one option getting Rome Medusier, and I'm and I'm definitely being stingy and hardhead by saying that I think they should trade up. I think they should trade up and try to go for the gold, bro. Go get Marvin Harrison if it's possible. And I think it. I'm, I'm, I'm being very, very stubborn. We might be coming out this draft with the best players in this draft. Let's just pray it happens. But if it doesn't, Roman Duzier is cool with me falling at nine, or I can go with that third. And, and I mean, uh, if Jared Verse follow us at nine or any other decent uh, edge uh, rusher. So we're going to see. We only got a couple more days to go, like 10 days, 11 days or something like that. So we about to yep. see. So hey, yeah. it's definitely right around the corner. And I'm not mad at C-Dub's uh, option. If you could come out of the draft with Marvin Harrison Jr. and Caleb Williams, that's an A. You, oh. you, that, that's an A for your draft. So it's something you definitely got to think about. I can't wait till it all goes down and make sure y'all right there with us. We will oh, be bro. live. Yes. So appreciate you, Barry. Hey, see, we're moving on alone. This next voicemail is from my guy, Bishop. Oh, Bishop. What's up, Hayes? Cognac boy, Steve-O. Man, I I watch you guys show regularly. I'm a uh, a diehard Chicago Chicago Bears fan. Yes, I hate that Justin left, but that's football. I'm from 43rd and Lake Park, you know, the low end where one stop is. I was actually in the first graduating class of Dr. Martin Luther King High School on 45th and Drexel, just to t- tell you a little bit about my background. But anyway, <clears throat> I have four concerns uh, uh, I would like for you to speak to, Hayes, or either one of the, the guys. <clears throat> what is it with Joy on Speaks that she's always knocking uh, that Chicago is, you know, bad on building quarterbacks? I agree with that in the past, but my next question is, <clears throat> just as Ryan Poles helped rebuild the culture and the skill set of uh uh Kansas City. Do you agree that Chicago that that uh that uh Ryan Pose is doing the same thing in Chicago? That's my second question. <clears throat> my third question is this why would they move Donnell Wright from one side of the line to the other? Explain that to me because that that I don't that doesn't make sense to me. And my last question is this 
Is it possible <clears throat> that the Bears can get Marvin, Marvin Harrison Jr. on the ninth pick, or how does that happen? How does that work? Uh, give me your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you, brother. Listen, you guys are teaching me about football. Uh, you guys are my favorite show. I watch you guys regularly. <clears throat> man, keep doing what you're doing, man, because it's helping me to understand how to look at football and not from an emotional standpoint, but from a business standpoint and respecting that. The Bears are about to make some uh, some history. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, Chicago up, Bear down. This is Bishop Lott in, in uh, Arizona by way of Chicago. Love. All right, so we heard that from Bishop C Dub. My guy had questions. Are you ready to give it to him? Yes. Hey, shout out to Bishop, man. We appreciate the love all the way out there in Arizona. Shout out to you, my guy. Um, when you first went out, you talking about Joy. I think I like Joy. Uh, but she picking an easy take. It's an easy take to say the the Bears have not developed quarterbacks in their in their um in their past because they haven't. But she don't realize it's a whole different regime in here with um, track records of great quarterback play and building great quarterbacks. Did you see Geno Smith la uh, the last couple of years? I go straight over to the Darnell Wright question. And I said, I didn't hear about him moving over to left tackle. I think he stays at right tackle unless I'm missing something. But I haven't heard of him going over from right tackle to left tackle. I don't think I think that would be a bad idea anyway. I think they tried to switch him over to left tackle in college. It didn't go as good as he was on the right tackle spot. So I'm going to just think he stays on the right tackle. When it comes to how we can get Marvin Harrison Jr., it is simple. Trade up. I think the Chargers. <laughs> the Chargers. Uh, everybody needs to take a look at the Chargers and Jim Harbaugh and how he plays football. Jim Harbaugh wants to hit you in your mouth. He wants to hit you in the teeth. He wants to run the ball. I expect him to grab an offensive lineman, me personally. So with that being said, they can trade down with that. So trade with the Chicago Bears with the number nine. We probably have to add maybe the next year's number one or next year's number two or something like that. And that's how you get you a Marvin Harrison Jr. You hear me? <laughs> hey, C Dub mapped it out perfectly for you. So I'm not gonna touch on the MHJ uh question, but I will touch on Joy. I, th I like Joy. I'm with C Dub. I like some of her takes, but again, it's like C Dub said, it's one of those takes the way you can easily say, Yeah, we look at the history and the Bears haven't been good. Cool. Bad. But there have I, I I think one of the things is that some people fail to realize there have been maybe not the greatest. 10 years for the some of the Bears coaches, I mean, quarterbacks, but we had some moments that was all right. I don't really want to talk about it, but Rex Grossman was a quarterback that went to the Super Bowl. I'm just saying. It, I'm just saying. Jay Cutler, he lasted a few D. He had a few decent years for the with the Chicago Bears, made it to the playoffs, and even made it to the NFC Championship. He did decide to ride the bike during the game, but he was there. So cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Mitch Trubisky, if it wasn't for Cody Parkey, Hitting a damn double doink all season and in one of the most crucial moments of the season, Mitch Trubisky could have went to the to the divisional round and would have beaten the Eagles. Yeah. And in that fourth quarter, to get the field goal, Mitch Trubisky led the drive. Can we keep yeah. it a bit? He did. Justin Fields didn't have the best win win loss record. Cool. But he was holding the damn team up on his neck <laughs> <laughs> so there has been some things there so it's not all bad but i understand it i understand it now if the bears if you now we talked about uh darnell Wright, so i'm not gonna really say that i don't think moving him to left tackle is a great idea i think that's you don't fuck with that mm -mm. but if the bears are starting to look like kansas city i would say in some ways but we have ways to go yeah. You might get you a quarterback in here that's comparable to Patrick Mahomes. I don't like to do that because I think it's 100% unfair. That's unfair. But if you look at the way the Bears are taking care of money, the way that they're dishing out deals, the additions to the defensive backfield in a now passing lead, trying to create some uh, uh, offensive explosion on the offensive side. You have you a number one wire uh, tight end. You got you a number one wide receiver. You're trying to build out the offensive line, so you have some pieces. But I think it's still too early to say we're looking like Kansas City because they are champions, and we are trying to get there. So I leave it at that. Yep. 
perfect I'm what you said. Yeah. So the next one we're going to roll up on, C-Dub, is we're going to play my guy, Josh, voicemail on this one. Yeah, Big Josh. Bobby, C-Dub, hey, Steve-O, my guy. It's Gerard tapping in from Arizona once again. Fuck with y'all boys, giving us the coldest content on YouTube, of course. But uh, no, 100, though, I fuck with y'all. Um, I just wanted to give my comments on uh, the new quarterback coming to the Chicago Bears, Caleb Williams. Uh, I know people saying he's zesty, he wearing. I don't give a fuck about none of that. The man better bring us the shit. I'm talking about the shit. And uh, I mean, I'm not expecting him to do this first year. That's uh, pretty unlikely or uh, I guess far out there. But what I do expect, I expect to see something totally different. I expect to see something completely different than what I've been seeing for the past. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, twenty years. Just something different. Just something different. I don't give a damn. If, I mean, just show us something different, man. Put put touchdowns on the board. We ain't got no reason not to. We got the best damn team that we didn't have since damn that 2008. I may be wrong about that one, but shit. I mean, I we definitely up there with it. I mean, how y'all feeling? How y'all boys feeling? I know we excited two weeks to the draft. Uh, let's turn it up. How we feeling? What we doing? All right, now, Josh, thanks for calling in, my guys, supporting the channel. Now, we talk about Kayla Williams. Look, man, I think it's very, very simple. It's going to be a lot of people that's placing these expectations on him and saying that he got to do this, do that. Cool. That's you, that's whoever opinion and perspective it is. I think it's a bit unrealistic, but it is what it is, and I believe people have that right to place those expectations on him. I think that what, what it comes down to is that you want to see the Chicago Bears place a quarterback in a situation that we've never seen before within this organization, and I believe that they're doing it. Now, when we talk about that OA team compared to now, I think that right now the proper team to compare the Bears to is the 2018 team with Mitch Trubisky, Akeem Hicks, Khalil Mack, all those guys. I think right now that's who the team is starting to resemble, but I believe on paper, it's still They still got to put it on wax. Y'all know me. You have to put it on wax. But on paper, this team is better than the 2018 team. Yeah. On yeah, paper. Sure. Yeah, it's sure. so many more weapons. But in that 2018 team, C-Dub, before you go, we had Khalil Mack. Yeah. Whew. We had good Eddie Jackson. Great yeah. Eddie Jackson. Yeah. We had um some wide receivers around there. Um, You had, uh damn, what's buddy name? I can't even think about it right now. Buddy that wouldn't block for Justin Fields and he was gone. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Uh, he eventually went on to play for the still Allen Robinson. There we go. Allen Robinson. We yeah, had yeah. that. DJ Moore is better than him. Yes. I believe yeah. we had Zach Miller at tight end. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. We did. I think Cole Komet is up there with him. Yep. So I think on paper, we looking all right. We looking all right. What you got? Uh, I just want to talk about Caleb Williams and the expectations. Everybody's saying uh, don't put too much expectations on this kid. Other people's like, we we expect greatness. We expect him to take us to the playoffs and get us to the um, to the NFC Championship game. I've been hearing all type of stuff. I want y'all to realize that this kid, every time he step on the field, anywhere, he thought he was the best player in the world. So I expect y'all to sit back and watch this dude. He is going to try to be the best in the world. And then when you say... Um, what do we expect from Caleb Williams? What I expect, me personally, I want that. I want him. I want Caleb Williams to leave no argument. Ever since we had a quarterback, for all I can remember, now nah, he ain't the quarterback. Yeah, he the. It's always been half and half. Just like with Justin Fields, just left. I was the Justin Fields guy, but it was half the Bears fandom. Like, nah, he's good. I want Caleb Williams to leave no doubt. Leave no doubt. Don't split us in half. Let everybody know that you're going to be here for the foreseeable future and doing great things for Chicago because we ain't had it. We ain't had it, bro. That's a lot of pressure, but that's what that's what it is. Facts. I, and, I'm, I'm, and that's why I said I'm not mad at people that put place in the high expectations either because this is a guy that's being hyped up as a generational talent. Yeah. And the Bears about to get him. So you got to you got to put it on wax for me, bro. That's just how I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. Hey. But C Dub, we keep moving along. Josh, thanks for calling in. C Dub, Shout this next God. one is from K2. K2 Z. Here it is. Yo, yo, yo. What up, fellas, man? Hey, 
I was trying to avoid coming on here like this, man. But I guess, I guess it's just time for me to just rip into these these so called Bears fans real quick, man. And please forgive me for any language that comes out of my mouth in these little three minutes on my rant. Now, just check this out, man. I'm sick and tired of hearing about Justin Fields. He ain't here no more, y'all. Hey, all you all you motherfuckers that want to chirp about Justin Fields constantly go over to Pittsburgh with that shit. Bird-ass niggas, like, stop talking about him, bro. He don't exist in Chicago no more. What he's done for us is done. It's over with, man. We moving on. And I just want to say that first. Stop talking about Justin Fields, bro. He ain't a bear no more, bro. We talk Chicago Bears over here, bro. All y'all that's calling in talking about all this nonsense, bro, like, just stop. It's over with. Get your panties out your ass and just move on, bro. Second, all the people that's constantly talking about we should trade, we should trade our top pick and get more picks. Look, man, y'all need to stop drinking the Kool-Aid, bro. How can y'all sit and watch Ryan Poles and his whole staff show up to only one QB's pro day? Only one QB visited Hallis Hall. No other QB's did. They done took this man to lunch twice, showed him over. They basically done gave him the keys already. But all y'all want to believe that this is a smoke screen. Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Like, are y'all really that stuck up? So one player's ass that y'all just can't get over the fact that he goes. So y'all making up all the excuses for this one guy that y'all never prove he can't play football. Y'all never say he can't play football. Y'all always making it about something else that's not football related. That shit lame as hell. That shit whack as hell. Stop calling the mailbag doing that shit. It irritates me to constantly listen to that, bro, because I see a whole bunch of comments on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all these places about these people that's calling him a diva and all this other shit that ain't got nothing to do with football. He gonna win us games. And when he start winning games for us, I don't want to see none of y'all ugly asses, nobody cheering for him, saying, I knew it. He said, no, y'all, he Jamarcus Russell. He did, he that. Y'all take y'all lame ass on, man, and... And just don't just don't worry about our team, man. But y'all forgive me for that little rant, little little rant I just had, man. Just always remember Chicago up and bear down or nothing, baby. Come on, man. Fiery, fiery, fiery on, voicemail left by my guy K two C Dub. Take K2. it away, K Deuce. Hey man, I'm with you, man. Hey man, that dude he gone. Justin gone, y'all. And we study every every week. We getting these 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 mailbags, bro. I don't think we got one this year, but we still got a couple more to go, I think. But uh, yeah, he's right in every sense of the imagination, in every sense of his comments. Uh, come on, y'all. We got to move forward. That's all I got to say. Let's just move forward, y'all. I think it's. I think that's the only way. And um, when that happened, Steve-O said it best: "Life ain't fair, and we damn sure know the NFL ain't fair." Yeah. That's just what it is. And Ryan Pose told everybody himself the timeline just didn't match up for what Justin Fields just didn't match up with Justin Fields because when he came in, he had the clean books. So you had to get a bunch of weak players and be able to clean books. Then you started to make some changes and time just ran out for Justin Fields. Now, if you say that you're going to lead the Bears to go be a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, cool. I like the Steelers organizations. Cool. Kudos to you. But as K2 so eloquently put it, once the Bears start getting rolling, because I think they're going to start rolling, you ain't going to be able to slide back over here. And I wish Justin Fields the best. In, I'm going to still check him out. Yeah. But he's not. But let's keep it a buck. He's not a Bear anymore. Not. This is not the Chicago Justin Fields. This is the Chicago Bears. The yeah. big ass orange and blue bear you see everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's what it's mostly about. Don't have to like all the decisions. But we 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 supporting the team, man. Yeah. Not we we love our players, but it's about the team. And this decision, as much as we don't like it, it makes sense and what's better for the team. So, That's all I got. Yeah. Don't come back. Stay your ass over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but C Dub, it's been a great one. You know how we gonna end it on every one.
Mariff. With a lit one to end the show. This guy, we ain't heard from it, but guess what, C-Dub? He black yet again. This <laughs> next one is for Marifa. Marifa! Bobby, C-Dub, hey, the Cognac boys. What's happening, fellas? It's your man, Marifa Asa. Black yet again, man. Listen, man, I've been out on vacation. You know what I'm saying? I was out of the country enjoying my life, putting tattoos on my passport, man. But I'm black. I'm black yet again. Back in CDC doing what I do. But look here, man. I'm coming to talk, man, about the quarterback fatigue, man. Listen, I done been a Chicago Bears fan since 1985, man. I was 12 years old when the Bears won the Super Bowl. I seen it, man, for myself. So I done been through the fives, the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, and I've been riding with the Bears ever since, man. But what I'm going to tell you right now, I'm thinking like Bobby. Bobby said, it, man, I ain't got no expectations. I'm not getting excited for no Caleb Williams. I can't do it, man. I ain't got enough energy for that no more. He gonna have to prove it to me, like Bobby say, and put it on wax, man. And it's gonna have to take at least two years because he gotta put some film out there on the field. And then we gonna see. Then we gonna see what Caleb is about. Man, I done been through it all, man. I done seen Jay Cutler and his smoking Jay attitude where he tapped out the NFC title game against Green Bay in Chicago. I done been through Mr. Trubisky getting him laughed up out of here. And then I got my hopes up high for Justin. And I love Justin, man. That's my man. I'm going to support him in Pittsburgh. I hope he do well. But I'm just saying, man, I cannot spend no more time and energy getting excited over these brand new first round quarterbacks. I can't do it, man. So it just, he got to prove it to me. So I'm just in wait and see mode with Kayla Williams. I'm going to give him a chance. I'm going to let him do his thing because Ryan Pohl ain't leave me no choice but to do that. He got rid of Justin. That's his choice. He chose him his Ryan Pohl team. So we're going to rock with him, okay? But I ain't excited. I'm not getting my hopes up high. Because he coming. Because I done seen this movie a thousand times. And I hopefully, hopefully it's a different outcome. But look at man. I got to get up out of here. I got place to go. I got peace to see. <laughs> but you know what I'm going to say before I leave. Look at man. Shout out to my nigga book. And my nigga Fred. The real OGs of CBC. It's Chicago up. And bad out, baby. <laughs> I love this dude, bro. Marifa, you come with so much energy every time, bro. Dude, it's so man. lit. What better way to end it? But as you so greatly said, the Bears got to put it on wax now. You didn't see it since 85. Well, you was 12. It's 2024. I did some quick math. You about 50. I ain't going to put your exact number out there. But you didn't see a lot of disappointment in your time with these bears. So I'm with you. And I'm listening to the OG. Yeah, I'm listening to the OG. They got to put it on wax. I'm in wait and see mode. And last point, C-Dub, they might don't want to hear it. But as the OG said, it might take about two years to really see. <laughs> Bro. Uh -huh. I know Damn. we ain't got that type of patience. We but it might time. take two years to see yeah, if yeah. this guy can be here for 10 years, well, he 15 least, years. Yeah, he'll he at least be here for two years. Yeah, goddamn. <laughs> you know me. Uh, um, good, perfectly stated, nephew. I just want to touch on this. To all you uh, Justin Fields, oh, you love him. This is the perfect posture to have right here. This is the perfect posture, what my riffer just said. Ryan Poles left him no choice but to but to cheer on and, and watch and see what Caleb Williams does. I think this is the perfect posture for everyone to have that was on the other side of the bus. Now, everybody take Mariffa's lead, and let's just wait and see what the kid can do before we kick him up out of Chicago, bro. Greatly said by my man Mariffa, man. If energy was, in a, was a soda drink, you would be Coca-Cola, my guy.
<laughs> C Dub came with a OG quote. The OG showing out. We ain't had Fred on today, but we had Book, we had C Dub, we had my Reef. You my already Reef. know. So shout out to y'all. And I love doing this and love hearing y'all thoughts. And I think that's the best way to go about it, man. Just wait and see. Don't talk about the man personally. Talk about what he can do on the field. You know what I'm saying? Who gives it? I don't really give a damn, bro. Paint his nails. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm still going to be touching something gushy at night. I'm good. Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I don't care. <laughs> but C-Dub, you got anything left? Hey, man. Uh, draft coming up. Make sure you guys are in tune because it's going to be lit. We first up and we might be fifth up. Just wait. See you y'all. never know. <laughs> you never know. And yeah. Ryan Poles ain't leave us no choice. If he do trade up and go get MHJ or yeah. trade yeah. back and go get somebody else, yeah. we yeah. will never it's know. Gonna, it's going to be exciting, Joe. Gonna but until then, make sure you tune in and, and be right there on the lookout for the live call during the draft. Everybody's going to be here rocking and rolling in their Bears Everybody. gear. Make sure you got your Bears gear, your H2O, your Yak, your tequila. Yo, Vodka, as long as it's not ever clear, we good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it from us today. Ladies and gentlemen, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. If you want to call in to be a part of an episode like this, that number is 773-242-9336. Y'all already know. Shot town up and bet down, baby. We're going to see y'all on the next one for sure. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.